Hello. Just checking some things here. How's everybody doing today? So I'm going to paint a violet green tree swallow today. And I'm just looking for, there it is. A pin, thing up a little bit. So hopefully everyone can, see, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> everyone can see. Um, and I'm doing something a little different today as well. This is also being um, live streamed to YouTube. Um, I haven't done that before, so this is a little bit different. Um, and if you would prefer to watch this on YouTube, if you go to the link in my bio, um, you can see a link to my YouTube channel there. Um, I think it should just show up as live. I'm not 100% sure. Um, <laughs> it's a bit of a learning process. Uh, it may very well be the case. Um, or I could be lying. I don't know. We'll find out in, in an hour. So either way, um, it's live. It's up on the computer in front of me. I see it there. So OK, so let's get. Uh, Let's get going with this. Um, it's a lovely photo um, a friend had put up the other day. I've been trying to photograph these birds for a number of weeks now. They're so small and I guess they just are leery of me. Don't let me get close enough to get a decent photo. So um, this person did though, her name's Jan, Jan Bryant. Um, and I will, uh, when I put the image up, when I'm done, I will uh, link her. So I'm just getting a couple pigments ready so I can start this bird off. Starting with my water first here. I'll grab a little bit of ochre. Not much, just really a light wash. And then actually going to use a little bit of what is a moderately new pigment to me. Called McCracken Black. It's quite a lovely one. Very versatile. Okay, and I'm just gonna start by just getting some lighter values in here. bit of water. Have a little bit of that up here too. It's going to be a little, I'm going to try and stay focused here, but adding an additional technical aspect. I feel like I'm monitoring two fires. Oh, I know somebody's found it. I just saw someone has decided to follow. So, so it's working. That's good. All right, so just get a little bit of value in there. And then I'm using a little bit of this. It's the bottom of these birds, it's, their bellies are fairly white, but I just want a little 
value down below. And there's my dog. In case anyone was wondering what the click clack was. I can always count on them for a little extra noise when I'm least expecting it. Just getting these washes in and we'll soften this one up. I don't want this too dark up the top. If I want to, I can always come back in here later and add some more value. But for now, I just kind of want to take some of the white out of the paper in this area. And once I get all that in, I'm just kind of break it up a little bit, drop some water in here. Yeah, that's gonna work. Hey, Tanya. Okay, so far so good. And I need to let that kind of dry a little bit. While that's kind of doing that. Yeah, and, and for those that, um, if you do watch on YouTube, uh, it's in a horizontal format, which means that uh, you can see my palette. Um, in the YouTube version, which as you probably heard me complain in the past, I can't really do here. Hey, Eleni. Goofy. All right, so that gives it a good start. I think, I don't think this one's gonna take very long. There's not, it's basically just a little bit of value like I've done there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I hadn't even thought about um, comments on uh, on YouTube. Fortunately, there's nothing there. So one more thing to monitor. I, I don't or haven't, um, Tanya, this is the, the first time. I kind of had the ingredients to do it for a little bit, but I have a couple videos up on YouTube, but the way it's been so far, um, I'm either 
doing a video for Instagram and then it goes up into the IGTV channel. Or I do a separate video and it goes to YouTube. I haven't been able to save um, the videos from Instagram and put them up. And I mean, I like doing these, but you know, they are just, you know, lack of better term, free demos. So I just didn't really have the time to make two, one for Instagram and one for YouTube. So I've now found a way to do both at the same time. So, so I'm simultaneously doing Instagram and YouTube. So YouTube is live. And then when it's done, I think it'll, it'll go up there. So it's, that's the plan, at least. Um, as to whether it pans out, you know, uh, that remains to be seen. <laughs> but um, seems like it should work. I certainly like the fact that people can see the palette too, because that frustrates me when I when I do this on Instagram. Okay, so nevertheless, um, I need to make sure this is dry. Uh, I'm happy with this wash on here. It's just kind of set one in. Um, what the local birds where I live, I'm lucky to have pheasants. Um, yeah, there's there's pheasants. Um, around here, not not right around my house. Um, Ring a ring necked ring necked pheasant, I think, is something that's um, in and around the area. I know of a friend that posted an image of, of one a little bit ago. Um, quite beautiful. Um, I do. I can go see some pretty cool pheasants. There's the Bloedel Conservatory here, and they have um, Lady Amherst's pheasant to a couple of them in there, and a couple of golden pheasants, and they're they're beautiful. Um, did you sketch that or transfer it? Uh, I sketch them. Um, I do it with a uh, pencil and then I remove pencil and then um, replace many of those lines with um, a watercolor pencil and removing lines with a, a kneaded eraser. Right. And I just roll over. I draw very lightly um, and then the pencil basically disappears. So, okay, so pardon the noise for a moment. I'm just gonna make sure this is completely dry before I go on and do the next layer here. Okay, so this bird is uh, a violet green tree swallow. Um, they got a really lovely um, coloring to them. I should have put my gray in the other well, but nevertheless. Um, so, mix up the green up in the top of the head is is kind of warm some more water in there so i'm going to use uh some i started using a bit of a yellow green but i'm going to go to my middle green and then i'm going to take some warm yellow and tone it down that way. And 
it's getting close. Still maybe a bit warm. Got a little bit of that's better. Just a bit bright, so I'm just dulling it down a bit with a, a touch of um, Quinvert Orange. And into that, I'm going to want to darken it a little. So I'm actually going to take some of this dark neutral I was using and just get some of that ready. And what I'm going to do is the, the top color on the head. The top of the head is kind of a warm yellow, dull yellow green. And then um, kind of progresses down and gets a little bit darker. So we'll just give that a go. I don't have a lot of moisture in my brush, which allows me to kind of get some nice loose brush tip work out the top of the head there. This is why I want to make sure that it was dry. I'm just feathering my brush through the paint, just trying to keep this wet. Probably should have maybe a little bit more paint in here, but too little too late. And then I'll grab some of this dark. It's going to come in here, blend it in around the bottom. It's a good start at least. It's gonna need some more value on there, but I'm happy with that to begin with. I'll probably just put a little bit more dark down near the very bottom here. The brush I'm using when it's not fully loaded with paint, I get a lot of um, little stray bristles and stuff, which allows me to get some nice little fine 
feathery pieces. And then if I just want to wash it out a little bit, I can just push it in a bit. Makes it kind of versatile for, for a lot of things, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. A little bit of his back shoulder here. I'm sure there's probably a more correct term, but I don't know what it is. Or maybe it's correct, I don't know. This is where I need Ivan. No. There we go. Getting a little bit of a little bit of value in there. It's a bit darker than than I would sometimes go on a first pass, but I think it works. And then as I go down into his body here, green kind of shifts. He's got this kind of a bit of an iridescence to him, which is quite lovely. So I'm going to go more something like this. Um, like a... <laughs> Did I say like this and then you can't see? That's because I can also see the YouTube. So YouTube can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm using like a diopside uh, green genuine, which is um, a pretty nice kind of middle-ish green. A glitter bird. What was the glitter bird again? Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of this light green. Just put a touch of that in here. And then I'm gonna grab my other green that I was mixing, which is the diopside green. Which is a really pretty green. And into the diopside. A little bit of um, Prussian, Prussian green. And as I come back further here, and get closer to the back of the wing. Oh, the rave bird, the roller. Oh, hi, Trish. I'm glad you like it. You say Northern? That's pretty vague. It's pretty big up there. Prince George, Prince Rupert, Mackenzie, Dawson Creek, where, what's? Fort St. James. I'm just putting a little bit of dark in towards the front edge of the wing. Prince George, okay. I've been there. 
many years ago. Seems like an eternity ago. Hey, Nona. Okay, so that's um, so a little bit of diopside green with a bit of Prussian, a little bit of uh, Prussian blue, and then this dark that I've been using, which is a um, McCracken black. Uh, and then. I'm gonna go into the wing. The wing kind of gets a little bit different. I'm gonna, this isn't entirely accurate, these colors I'm using here. But it doesn't matter. These are what I wanna use. I'm just kind of putting some color in underneath here. And then I'm going to be able to go on top of it. With some dark. And I'm just kind of going for a bunch of color in this. I can let these colors just kind of mix. And then as it, um, um, are they, they're, well, they're kind of, they're a little bit prepared. Sounds like her. Oh, cool. Beautiful birds. I'm just getting some color out here. I'm going to go over it once it's dry with some dark. But for now, I just want a little bit of color underneath these areas. All right, and while that dries a little bit, I'm gonna grab some black, black, black. We got Northern BC, Prince George. I know, Nona, you're in Brazil. Where else is everybody from today? So just putting some black in the eye. I always like to kind of get this part. I used to leave this 
till a lot later, upstate New York. All right, cool. What's upstate? Buffalo? I mean, I, that's the only part of New York I've been in. New York State. I've been in Buffalo. Buffalo's in Buffalo's in New York, right? <laughs> and forgive me on that one because I am I'm I am Canadian and I'm not too good on all my US geography. Whistler, Boise, Boise, Idaho. Idaho, Idaho. Um, is there like snake, snake, some twin, something? I'm trying to think of. A, I've been through like the bottom corner of Idaho many, many years ago. Rochester. Okay. I was kind of going through Buffalo on my way down into um, Pennsylvania. I stopped in Buffalo and went to um, a house there that Frank Lloyd Wright designed. Beautiful. Which seems suiting because I was going down to Pennsylvania go to Bear Run and see Falling Water, one of Frank Lloyd Wright's arguably most famous buildings. Snake River, yep, I think that's it. That is in Idaho, yeah? a long time ago. Wow. I was on a road trip with my sister. Oh, you've been to Falling Water. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's so amazing. Okay, so um, I started with the light values into the chest here. Uh, and then put some green mixture up into the head and kind of darkened a little bit closer towards the bottom. That's kind of light wraps around the head. Kind of worked some of these colors through the wing and down to kind of get some of that um, iridescence that, that kind of happens um, on these birds. Um, so I've kind of got that in place. Uh, I got some color in the iris there and ended up doing the pupil. And I've got a, just a very light, I've used this um, value here with a touch of ultramarine to get kind of a gray down blue, fairly light. And I just did a quick little lift on the top. Um, oh, during the chickadas. Yeah, I was there during the summer and it was stinking, stinking hot. Oh my God. So now I want to build a little more um, value on top of this bird. And in order to do so, I need to make sure that he's um, completely dry again. So I wanna build some value down into the wing, um, take care of some of the value down the back here on the back wing, get that sorted out. And then I have a few more adjustments that I'm gonna wanna do. So forgive me for a moment while I dry this.
Okay, I'm gonna grab my small brush and a little bit of this darker value I've been playing around with. And I'm just gonna go um, a little bit around the outside of the eye here. Just have like a little bit of a thing there. Kind of a little bit of a darker patch for his nostril. Just gonna connect those shapes up. Uh, a little bit more. I see someone is requesting to be in. I can't really do that. I don't know if you're doing that on accident, by accident or on purpose, but see, I see you. I just can't do it. Just using a very small brush here, just gently, just kind of moving through. Might want to put a little bit more value in that, but. Make it a bit higher. There we go. That's better. And where is that dark blue I was using? So I'm just going to go into the um, bottom of the beak since it's a little bit drier now. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to ask away. Oh, if I see it, I'll answer. Always try to get a little bit of a darker value towards the bottom. Just helps give that um, sense of depth. So, and the other thing that I need to pay attention to is overall sense of, of value. I do like a progression of darks up towards the head. And, you know, you look down here and it's all quite light. And while something too dark far away from the head can be a bit of a distraction. Um, similarly, something too light can also serve as a, as a bit of a distraction. So I kind of need to watch some of these values that I'm establishing in this bird. So I'm just going to kind of play around with what's going on down here by just glazing over top of it with um, dark. And I might do this in one pass. It might end up being uh, a couple. It's going to be a couple because this isn't strong enough. So I think a 
couple actually be nice though. I always kind of suggest just because of the nature of watercolor, if you're not a hundred percent on the value, don't be shy. Don't don't be afraid of going too light first, because too light is a lot easier to fix than too dark. I'm just getting some more value then down here. I'm just gonna kind of go back into some of this area I was painting. It's a little bit damp. So some of this will soften, some of this won't. Just looking to build up some value in there is really all I'm after. And down here. Clean that brush, control the moisture in it. I still get some of that color poking through. So it wasn't like I did the color for no reason, um, but I don't have that color really competing with some of these other brighter colors instantly. As soon as I kind of go over this with some neutral and reduce the amount that's there, it kind of makes the other colors just kind of pop a little bit more. Which is more what I wanted. Okay, he's coming, he's coming along. So I wanna go back up into the head. I want a little bit more value in there. Um, I am gonna just hair dryer real quick here just to make sure that it's sitting down there. And because I've got um, some value already sitting around up there, should be able to just kind of glaze over top. I hope, that's my hope. So I'm mixing up um, dial side green with a bit of 
I think it's like nickel azyl yellow. It's what I would refer to as my warm, um, warm yellow. I usually keep a warm and a cool pairing of everything. So. I think I'm going to go a little bit more with the orange this time. Get it kind of mossy. What I do is just kind of bring this into the head. It's fairly thick, so I need to be fairly quick as well. So I'm just going to kind of bring it around. And kind of bring it over a little bit. And I'm just bringing the brush up into the edge of that wash just to keep it wet. Haha. <laughs> and uh now I'm just going to spin him around because he likes it. And I'm just going to come through here and just soften this. Clean out some of that stuff out of my brush. Deal with the moisture a little bit better. <laughs> Sorry, which green do you like, Hannah? It's the one in the wing, right, at the, right there, yeah? That one, that emerald. <laughs> and now I'm just dropping a little bit of this dark value just down along the bottom and then into a part of this here. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> now, since it's kind of wet in there, I can get away with this, but I want a little bit more value um, in that patch in front of his eye. So, I'm just gonna go right up into this. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm always after the darkest values up and in around the head area. So I don't mind going in here again and just bringing this up on the dark scale. It'll have a couple of effects. One, I think that I feel like the dark really helps kind of bring the eye up to the head. And you know, I didn't really save a lot of white on the body because I kind of colored it all in. But now that I have a real dark area here, it does make 
those white areas feel um, a little more white. Add a little bit more value into of this nose. And also just over in here. Okay, we're almost done. Actually, not too bad. Just about an hour. Um, so a good chunk of this is fairly wet. Um, I want to bring a little bit more value into his body and then also underneath here. So I'm just going to run over it with the hair dryer here and make sure it's still completely dry. I see some comments on YouTube here too. Someone from Bulgaria. Hello in Bulgaria. Also in Thunder Bay, Ontario. A town when I we moved to Ontario for about four years and drove from Victoria by way of the ferry to Vancouver and then Vancouver all the way across. Um, I remember Thunder Bay uh, in particular because <laughs> I was almost, I have a habit of, of um, just trying to see how far the car will go uh, before it runs out of gas. And um, I'd calculated it pretty good to get to Thunder Bay, but the route that I had taken, um, there was a detour. And it was literally going downhill towards on the highway into Thunder Bay and like praying, just trying to like coast as much as possible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we made it, we made it. Kind of doing that parental thing of slightly lying to your kids because they knew you were concerned and it's like oh yeah yeah no 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 don't worry we're gonna make it it's all good meanwhile i was like grateful for the fact that there were blankets and stuff in the car in case we got stranded <laughs> So just a little value down here, just to soften some of it. So it's just not all one big dark wash. So up around the top here, I'm just gonna drop a little bit, something slightly thicker, just right underneath this wing.
control the moisture there, soften it a little bit more. And I'm gonna take some more of this and just kind of come underneath here. bringing some of this up, quickly wicking the brush. Just gonna flip them around again. Just getting a little bit of value underneath his um, tummy there. And then also up and in and around his head. This is why I went in and made sure this was all dry. I'm just softening this, but before I softened it, I just picked up a tiny little bit of Prussian blue. I don't know why I didn't think I was gonna do that, but then I just kind of felt like it at the last minute there. And then just soften this all up and through. Actually, I kind of like that impression. Just put a little bit more in there. Got to watch something like the Prussians and things like that because they stain pretty fast. So, Almost done.
Almost done. What bird is it? It is a violet green tree swallow. They're all over the place around here right now. They're super fast. Tough to get them to sit still. The shadow, yeah. I agree. The shadow and I like that little bit of blue that I um, put into the uh, chest there. That blue is killing me, I love it. They do have very beautiful colors. You know, they're very, very pretty. I've been thinking about whether I would come up here and darken up that shoulder a little bit, but I think I'm gonna leave it. So uh, a couple things left and then this dude's done. So I'm just grabbing um, my pastel pencils, I'm trying to find a blending stump that'll work. There we go. And I just need to sharpen these quickly because they're a little dull. So it's gonna standing block off the side here. So if you hear that rubbing noise, it's me. And then use a little shape to the tip so I can fit it in. All right. Just get the excess pastel off the tip there. And I'm just gonna do one last quick little hair dry on this bird.
Okay, he's dry enough. So I'm gonna go into the top of the eye with some burnt umber. I've been looking forward to painting this bird for a couple of days now. I was gonna do it the other day, but I figured I'd wait. So I'm just softening some of that pastel, leaving a little bit of the lighter color that I painted in earlier. And I mean, I could do this with um, paint, but I like the kind of satiny texture that the rubbed pastel gives in the eyes. Just makes them feel a little bit more alive to me. <laughs> My blending stump. There we go. So oddly enough, I, I'm also been dealing a little bit with some iridescence in this bird because, well, because <laughs> um, I thought I was done, but I'm not. Which also means I'm probably going to need to do one more thing with the hair dryer here. Um, just in this beak here. a little bit better, a little bit more interesting. Not only do I kind of think about values as I move through the bird, I think about, you know, the level of detail as I go through the painting as well to um, slowly getting to kind of more implied detail in and around the head and not so much anywhere else. No, you're welcome. I'm glad you like it. Now, uh, one last time with the dryer, and then I'm just going to do a little bit of pastel in the beak, and he'll be done. There we go. Oh, thanks for all the hearts there. Always nice to see those pop up. So my hope is that um, I mentioned it earlier and I haven't really kind of addressed it again, but um, you're watching this on IG live and it's also being um, live streamed on YouTube right now. It's the first time I've tried to do that. So 
I'm hoping it works out. If it does, this video will also get posted up on YouTube. And there's a bit of a difference um, in what you'll be able to see between this and the YouTube one, because on YouTube, I actually have um, a camera set up above that's shooting horizontal. So you can see my palette as I've been going in and grabbing my paint. And if you, I don't have a lot up on YouTube. I keep meaning to get in there and, and develop that a little further because I do like the horizontal format for this type of thing. But I, mean, I kind of stumbled into IG Lives last year when the pandemic started. I never really gave it much thought. So if you go into the link in my bio, there's a number of things in there, some things about some workshops I've got coming up. I've got a demo coming up for Etcher. Actually, um, one is sold out. Um, just added a second one. I think it's like the 25th of July. I'm going to do a three hour workshop for Etcher. Um, there's also a link to my Kofi page. So if you kind of enjoy these demos and you want to buy me a coffee, Kofi, I call it Kofi, it's coffee, but it's spelled K-O-F-I. Um, you're welcome. The link to my Kofi account is also in the bio on Instagram there. Support is always greatly appreciated. But and the whole point of that was to really bring up the fact that um, the link to my YouTube channel is up on the um, in the bio as well. It just says nothing fancy. I think it just says my YouTube channel. <laughs> I literally just kind of thought, oh, right before I went live, people will probably want to know how to find it. So it's um, the link in my bio goes to a link tree page. So. I just stuffed it in there. So I'm just doing a little, anywhere that I feel the edge is a little clumpy, real highfalutin term there, clumpy. It's real fancy artistic jargon. Lumpiness. Uh, it's just a, a box cutter, nothing fancy. What I'd love to have would be like a um, uh, a dental tool, like a little, you know, for like when they scrape your teeth. That would be great. I'm just wondering if maybe I can quietly put one in my pocket the next time I'm at the dentist. I just think those would be the perfect little tool to scrape. All right, I'm just grabbing a little bit of some red off the side here. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see what I'm doing. It's just a little warm red. And for those of you on Instagram, I'll just verbally talk about what I'm doing. And then I've got a, um, a rigger brush. 
and this bird is done. Like I'm, I like him. I think he looks really cool. So yeah, so there is a violet green tree swallow. A little bit different if you see them next to like a tree swallow. I mean, one thing is gonna be the color for sure. They got a little bit of a, a bit of the white on their belly, comes up and wraps a bit around the back of the tail. Um, and uh, their wings are um, a little bit longer than um, the tree swallow too when you see them in, in set up. So anyways, that was fun. Uh, I really enjoyed painting that today. Hopefully you all did too. And um, thanks. And had no big major technical issues either. So, which was good. A little bit nervous trying to um, multi-stream, I guess. <laughs> but uh, it seems to have worked. So we'll find out in a moment when I end this and see if I can save this and then same for the, the YouTube version. Um, but we'll find out. It's always a bit of a gamble. Thanks everybody, take care. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye everybody.